quickie. So I just saw Zombieland 2 confirm your kill, and it was a little mediocre, but it was still rather satisfying to me. Honestly, this is probably one of the most light-hearted movies I've seen so far this year. I've had to say a lot for a movie that is literally about zombies. Now the reason why I only watched this movie a month after its release is because I don't know if I'm able to watch a Zombieland movie in a full theater. Like, I could just imagine me in the original saying, oh wow, cool, Bill Murray, I love Bill Murray. And then just 30 other people just all going, oh, Bill, cool, Bill Murray, I love Bill Murray. And it would kind of just ruin my experience. And I know there's a lot of other people that probably feel the same way. And there's also a lot of people that probably do not know whether this will be a worthy sequel to the original. So I think this review is mostly for those people. These movies are innovative to me because while they have a fixed up plot about it, mad-eating creatures, it's the characters that drive the story. Making a good zombie movie isn't really about zombies or the kills, even if people think those look cool, it's mostly about the characters. It is the same reason why everyone likes that other zombie parody as well. More zombie parodies should take note of this because this franchise is a parody done well. The original Zombieland is a significant example of a parody character movie that is close to perfection. I mean, you can remove the zombies completely and replace it with anything else, and the characters would still be this good. The zombies are only here to entertain the audience that like blood, gore, and light-hearted comic relief. And the second one is no exception. Zombies are a bit more prominent in this movie, but not in a bad way. It's just for the sake of comedy. This movie also has new characters that are beyond doubt stereotypical, but it's in a well-written manner. Having these trope-like new characters with our unique, realistic heroes is perfect. They even included corny versions of our main characters, just for fun. Some characters, however, did get a little annoying. I liked the dumb blonde girl a lot because she was well-written in the story, but the other characters are a little too much for me to handle. Comedy can be very subjective at times, but this movie, whilst really funny from my perspective, loses some parts of its charm due to the lack of chemistry that the main characters have, but I'll get to that later. I think the most effective relationship, even in the original, is Tallahassee and Columbus, but everything else has something missing or something wrong, and, and it does not reflect well. It does not feel like these characters have been hanging out together for a whole decade. It surfaces to three months at best, and this is honestly the biggest flaw in the whole movie. However, comedy is really good in this movie because it knows when it's time to fucking stop. When a joke or funny part has fulfilled its purpose, it's either kicked out of a movie or just for some time until it can be funny again. Nothing feels overdone and it is faultless. Okay, so now we have to do spoilers, basically. Like, if you don't want any spoilers, then you better, like, you know, bugger off now. Okay, so, uh, three, two, one. I said recently that I didn't feel like these characters had been together for ten years. And it doesn't, because the chemistry is flawed. Near the beginning of the movie, Wichita leaves Columbus with a note, and this already feels out of place. She knew the guy for ten years in a zombie apocalypse, and out of pretty much nowhere, she decides to leave forever. Then Lil Rock finds Avan Jogier, and then she leaves her sister, the one she knew her entire fucking life, the one who she paired up with in battle. She leaves her sister forever. After Columbus sleeps with Madison, Wichita gets pissed, and that is what the movie is about. It's not the movie breakup reunite routine that bothers me. That part was actually one of the most pragmatic parts of the movie since both their arguments are completely valid and neither of them are making a huge deal out of it. My problem arises from the fact that Columbus never apologizes for his actions, or comes to terms with it. The difference is, is that Wichita apologized, it, but he didn't and he gets forgiven by the end. Tallahassee never apologizes for his actions either. He didn't really learn anything, but I guess he gets a pass because of his role in the final act. Even when they find Little Rock, she doesn't even get a slap on the wrist. She basically says, Yo, could you guys leave? I'm trying to have a new life here and I don't want you guys to really be a part of it anymore. There's also in this movie a peace resort where there are no zombies, and it is built in the exact same way as in the first movie. There are no zombies, the characters do a dumb thing that attracts them, and that is what the final battle is about, and it is pretty dumb, and it's exactly the same way in the second movie. I mean, it was fun, but still, in the second movie, 
kind of mediocre compared to the first Final Battle, which used its location in creative ways. And this movie doesn't really have that. This movie is really fun to watch, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was, so maybe you also shouldn't try to build your hype when watching this. It has more flaws than the original, and is less subversive, but it feels more charismatic and fluid, and it doesn't waste your time. So I would give the original movie a whopping 9 out of 10, and I would present Zombieland 2 with a 7 out of 10.